Hi friends, the Flinch Squad has some brand new merch out at the moment. Go over to our new Teespring store, the link down in the description. There is a promo code of 10% of all orders up until Friday the 27th of midnight. So grab your merch and rep the squad at events now. Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we're going to continue on with this dual primal team that we kicked off with at the beginning of the week earlier this week. So, uh, you might have seen prior to the video starting that we had a little bit of a promo for the uh, the new Flinch Squad merch that we've got going on at the minute. I'm actually wearing one of these nice new Flinch Squad shirts. So we've got some new designs, we've launched the Teespring store once again, and like I say, it's full of amazing new designs, or what I think are amazing designs, so hopefully you like them. The link is down in the description, and remember, at the moment, if you want to grab yourself a, a Flinch Squad shirt, you want to rep the Flinch Squad out there at events and just in general, you can grab a bargain at the minute because there is a 10% discount code. Just type in Flinch Squad when you're at the checkout and you'll get 10% off your order and that'll run until Friday, midnight Friday this week. So get your stuff while you can. But anyway, on to the more important things that you'll prime core. We've had some really good games so far this week. As always, the team is down in the description below. There is a raw pace and a poker pace for you guys to check out and try out if you want. And um, we made some in new inclusions to the team uh, on Monday with the Sableye and that Bronzong. And both have been doing so much work so far. So I'm really hoping it continues on today. I'm feeling a lot better as well. Thank you so much to each and every one of you as well. Once again, for all of the, the, the get well wishes and things like that, really meant a lot. Um, we are on 1672, but do feel a lot better today. Um, and hopefully that continues as the week goes on. So we'll kick off the Chrono version one. We've got uh, Dakan as our first opponent. Ooh, Pachirisu. So let's get into team preview. Uh, okay, so we're going to go up against an X-Ray called Xerneas and Rayquaza, Pachirisu, uh, Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Supporting Cast, and then the other offensive mon of the team, if you can say that, is going to be Nihiligo. So Pachirisu, a nice in member to the team, has uh, access to Super Fang, Follow Me, Nuzzle, all sorts of things that are a pain in the butt to deal with. Um, a Trick Room mod, though, is going to do wonders for us here. Um, especially if we can just get Groudon, even with either Groudon or Kyogre set up. Gr uh, Bronzong also gives us the option to uh, deal with the Xerneas and the Nilego. Uh, we have to be a bit careful around the Incineroar, especially if the, the Z-move is there. It's more likely the Z-move on these sort of teams. You're going to see the Z-move on Nilego though, so I don't think we have too much to worry about there. Um, the one thing, if I do bring Bronzong, I probably want to bring Sableye as well. It does mean that we're leaving Coco out, which could be quite good for just getting rid of the Tapu Fini um, in general. But then you've got to think, mm, could we really make the best use of Tapu Coco uh, when Pachirisu is sitting on the field as well? So I think we'll go Sableye, Bronzong, and our dual primals in the back. And we've been playing this, this fall quite a lot recently, so we'll lock in with and we'll, uh, we'll see how we get on this first one today. Yeah, these four kind of seem to be the fallback ones for our, um, our Trick Room mode primarily. And we seem to be playing a little bit more towards that end of the spectrum rather than our Tailwind mode with Salamence. But maybe as the week goes on we'll see a bit more from Salamence because I do feel like it's still a real valuable member of the team. Uh, we are going to see Xerneas and Incineroar come up for my opponent here. Okay. Um... Now, we've got a few options. We could we could definitely fake out the Incineroar and set up a Trick Room. Could be a quite a nice option, to be honest. Um, I don't know if the Xerneas even stays out in the field now. We've got an option to taunt the Xerneas straight away if we want to, try for a Trick Room. Um, I think the thing that we have to watch out for is if the, the Xerneas just decides to attack, um, which isn't the worst thing in the world because Sableye does have the Sash so we can we can totally get around that. Just I don't really want to take an attack with Incineroar and getting the Trick Room up early on is going to be really nice for us because the next turn we can get Groudon in and we are going to see uh, the Incineroar there just go for a fake out and a Dazzling Gleam coming out from the bottom. The uh, Xerneas doesn't want to set up just yet. Okay, well that makes a lot of sense. 
The other option we could do is potentially switch um, Kyogre in rather than Groudon and um, go for a Gyro Ball into the Xerneas. I mean, that's kind of the obvious thing to do, isn't it? I mean, Xerneas probably protects us, which is out here. Uh, I'm going to go for Kyogre. I just feel like the Incineroar if it goes for anything, it's going to be Flare Blitz. And switching in Groudon now to boost that onto Bronzong is never going to be the best idea for us. We could Gravity right now. Um, and then we've, at least we've got Hypnosis to take advantage of the next turn, which might actually be not a bad idea, although Tapu Fini probably is lurking in the back, so maybe it's not the best idea. We'll just go with the, the Gyro Ball here. Uh, like I said, Xerneas may protect. If it doesn't, we get some nice damage onto it. Um, but I would, I would say, I don't know if I'm gonna, we're gonna see Darkest Lariat from the Incineroar. If it's got the Z move then, makes things a lot more difficult for us going forward, of course. So we'll get the rain in with Kyogre. Um, ooh, no protect from the Xerneas, which is interesting. Ooh, not doing very much after that uh, Intimidate. We're just going to see a U-turn now from the Incineral, um onto Bronzong. So you could have potentially got Groudon onto the field. Rayquaz are going to hit the field now. Imagine that's what we'll see. I wonder if we'll see the Xerneas go for a Geomancy. It's probably just going to attack again to try and get rid of the... Um, Oh, it goes for the Geomancy. Wow, okay. Well, wow. don't mind that too much because we can potentially switch um, Kyogre out to Groudon. And I think you've got Rayquaza in the back, 100%. So we could potentially go switch Groudon in um, and get the gravity up. And I think that's what I might do gravity, yeah. We might see the Pachu receive switch Alpha and Cinero, so my opponent's got uh, that additional turn to kind of try and burn through the trick room uh, with the fake out support when it does come back onto the field, but we'll see. We'll get Kyogre out of harm's way anyway. Groudon I'm going to be able to sap up these fairy type attacks a lot better than Kyogre would be able to. Resisting them and all, so let's see. We'll get Groudon onto the field now. Surprised at that gyro ball doing very little to that. Such a bulky Xerneas, isn't it? Uh, Pachirisu protecting. Okay, well that's fine. Xerneas protect. Ideal. Ideal! Okay, now we're in the money. Because we're going to start putting stuff to sleep and just checking out some blades. Blades and hypnosis. Okay. Let's go big blades and let's go hypnosis into Zern. We'll probably say follow me, but if we don't, then we can put the Xerneas to sleep and really shut down that option for my opponent. But I imagine you see a follow me. I don't know what item Pachirisu normally carries. Is it Focus Sash? It could make sense that it does carry that. But who knows? We'll soon find out. Yeah, there's a follow me. Okay. So at least we stop that the next turn. Mm, we're going to see a Moonblast probably into Bronzong to deny our Trick Room going up again, I would imagine. But unintimidated Precipice Blades. Ooh, we actually take down the Pasture Issue. Okay. Would have been better really than going for uh, a, a Gyro Ball. Because now we're going to see Incineroar come in. Um... Yeah, it's going to intimidate, and we know the rays in the back. We like a guaranteed a hundred percent rays in the back. Um, hmm. Do we just go for another precipice blades though, and a gyro ball? I think we're only fake out one thing. We could go for hypnosis into the incineral and just precipice blades. How many turns of Trick Room are left? One. Hmm. Probably better off going for the Gyro Ball, to be honest, and just the Blades. Because the Precipice Blade should get... Okay. I 
think they're gonna just a, okay. Right. Oh. Huh. Right. All right. Well, I don't really mind that too much. This won't take down Incineroar after a minus one. But we still got the gravity in effect, and I don't think they're gonna be able to take down Groudon. And I think you really have to. Well, should we try and trick room? We'll try and trick room again. I don't think we'll get the trick room. I think Bronzong will go down uh, to Dazzle or Moonblast or a Dazzle and whatever Incineroar throws out. <clears throat> but Groudon should outspeed the Incineroar and then the Precipice Blade should take both down. And if it is the Ray in the back, which we will find out now, yeah. It, this The Ray will take damage from this Precipice Blade still. Um, and if we see it, if it's not into Bronzong, then we get the Trick Room up. Oh, we, okay. We'll lose Bronzong, but I think this is this is way more worth it because the Precipice Blades now should take the Xerneas down. I do a good chunk of damage to this Rayquaza as well. Yeah. And then we can get Sableye back onto the field. Um, hmm. Yeah, because we'll keep Kyogre for the late game. Um, and we can potentially utilize our gravity one more time. How many turns of gravity we've we got left? If we've got two, that would be ideal. Just one! Not enough. Okay, uh, we'll go for a Precipice Blades and we'll go for a Fake Out. We'll probably trade Fake Outs here. I think that, that makes the most sense. They'll fake our Groudon out. We'll fake the Rayquaza out. If they don't, we get rid of the Incineroar. Um, fake out into Groudon, yeah. Makes sense. Okay. I don't really mind what happens here now. Gravity is gone. Uh, we could quash. Yeah, we could totally, I mean, yeah, because if you extreme speed, you're not really get, getting anything. You can't extreme speed Sableye. Groudon's not going to go down from it. Let's extreme speed the, uh, quash the Rayquaza, because then we can guarantee the Precipice Blades onto the Incineroar. Let's see Incineroar is like, super fast, but regardless of that, yeah, it's going to Mega Evolve into Mega Ring. <clears throat> Hanging on for as long as it probably can at this point. Quash is such a good utility, isn't it? It is such a good utility. I just I just love it. I love Sableye. It's so good. I think I might even take it to an event soon. Groudon still on form, hitting these precipice blades. Um and like it like I say, if you go for Groudon now, it leaves Sableye open. Uh vice versa, you kind of yeah, you're gonna get Groudon. Do we take Oh, <laughs> invisible sash. There we go. Okay, um, and we could quash again and fire punch. I'm more tempted just to go uh, foul play, foul play. Because if we get a foul play now, I mean it does nice damage, but we just see the forfeit. So very good game to my opponent. Nice one for us to kick off with today, and uh, I think we managed everything quite well. Especially after getting surprised with how bulky that Xerneas was. We kind of got our trick room up, set ourselves up in a, a, a position where um, we made it very difficult for my opponent to kind of come back from uh, after we got that um, gravity up as well under the trick room with Groudon and uh, we weren't intimidated. So, uh, team doing well. And we didn't even need Kyogre really, did we? We may have needed it as a, a kind of soft check to Flare Blitz, but it didn't come to that. So sitting on a rating of 1682 at the minute, I will go with, um, what music? Uh, Ultra Recon Squad. Let's hop over to this screen and hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent. Um, but yes, it's nice being back and not being all nasally. I'm probably a slightly nasally, but like not half as bad as I was earlier in the week and last week when I was doing the videos. Uh, it, I feel a bit more normal as well, so I'm not um, I'm not feeling ill in any way really. I feel quite good today, so that's nice. It makes a change, and um, yes, I wonder 
how many of you are going to uh, there's an event there's a regional in Germany this weekend so for all of you going over there this weekend have a safe trip have an amazing time if you are going let me know um, unfortunately I won't be there um, I can't really travel abroad until I think the earliest it's going to be into the new year really uh, with with having fear and things at the minute so which is understandable but I will be at a PC this weekend we are going down to see uh, visit Tasha's Gran down in Devon so which is very close to Plymouth and so happens there is a PC happening on Saturday in Plymouth so I will be there um, I've never been down to Plymouth before so it'll be a brand new experience all around I'll be definitely repping the Flinch Squad shirt if there's by any chance any of you watching this and you'll be at that PC this weekend definitely come and say hi I would love to meet you and uh, hopefully it'll be a good event and uh, it'll be my first event of the 2020 season and it'll be my first event in almost a year like competitive event in almost a year which seems crazy um really crazy and i cannot wait to go and play i might even play this team on the weekend because i'm genuinely loving it i really do love it and i definitely know i want to play tapa coco 100 percent because i'm just loving coco at the minute i can't get enough for coco um the only thing i would maybe change is like i really like combination of coco cartana so i might be tempted to switch things up in that respect uh but i think this team does well and uh, if i can rock up to a pc with sableye i know i'm gonna have a lot of fun with it so that's the other thing um, but the, obviously the goal is to get off the mark, get uh, get the win, get 30 CP to kick off my uh, season and on the road to London, uh, which would be very nice because I've got Plymouth this weekend and then Bristol, thankfully, uh, has a PC the following weekend and then the following weekend after that it's a double MSS in Orpington, which is going to be really cool. So like three weekends of events, so uh, this is going to be the first of three. Um, and obviously because I can't travel abroad uh, at the minute, I'm just attending locals which is uh, which is fine which is really nice get to see uh, the UK scene the UK guys and girls and uh, hang out with you lot and uh, play some Pokemon which is always fun um, but I am missing traveling far and wide for for regionals and other things but hopefully in the new year when it comes around um, I'll have built enough points up through locals where I can have some really good finishes at those regional um, and international level events and uh, clinch that 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 uh, that invite to the world championships it's um it's taken ages to find the next opponent where is everyone today everyone's left the building okay right what we're gonna do cut here we'll come back save you guys time um when we find our next opponent so i'll see you all in a minute episode 1681 rated japanese player and we'll get straight into team proof because we've got the old duo from 2016 appearing in this team between Xerneas and Smeagol. And you know what? It is an X-ray day. We're going to have another X-ray call to play here. So Xerneas and Rayquaza. Uh, supporting cast here going to be the Incineroar and Landorus. Landorus something we saw very early X-ray builds. Uh, not so much now. Uh, but I do think it's pretty necessary for these builds it helps against a lot of things that the team does struggle against uh, you're going to see whimsicott it is going to be a speed setter it's going to help shut things down potentially with encore taunt um, and then the smeagol obviously with its fast fake out and um, follow me um, and other all sorts of shenanigans that it can offer and uh, causes a lot of havoc so Sableye going to be good because we can't be taunted, we can't be on cord because we are part dark type. So the Whimsicott becomes a little bit yes less useful there. Um, and we can't be faked out either, which is nice. Um, do we want to go Trick Room? Because my opponent doesn't seem to be very good in Trick Room. Again, Trick Room could be very good for us uh, with Bronzong. And uh, it feels like I'm just bringing the same four again. Is this four just the four that we're going to bring? Um... I think we're all right. The only thing that I would worry about would be the Smeagol getting a bit carried away with maybe Spores if it's got it. But then we do have Taunt on Sableye. So if we just protect it, we should be all right. Right, let's get into it. Let's see what we can do. Let's not make any slip-ups. Come on. We need to keep this clean. We're doing so well. Come on. This is this is crunch time. It's crunch time. It's the we're imagining. It's Swiss Swiss rounds. It's like round five. We've got three more rounds, including this one, to go. And we're we're exile. We need to keep things. This is the crunch time. So we can move into that next round. A bit more relaxed. No, and if we win one more, we're in cut. 
There we go. No pressure. Okay, we're going to see where Quasar Smeagol come out for my opponent. Um, ah, oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, Smeagol? Are you going to fake out? Are you going to are you going to fake out? Or are you going to just put us to sleep? I would think you'll try and put us to sleep. Um, hmm. I, I, the only reason, like, I want to fake out Smeagol because I feel like it's probably not going to fake us out. But I'm going to feel real, real dumb if if we see the Smeagol go fake out in the Bronze Song and we fake it out as well, you know? Um, so, I just don't want Bronze Song going to sleep because if it goes to sleep... We lose all kind of momentum in our trick room mode. I'm gonna go for that. I'm gonna go fake out trick room. I think this mega won't fake us out. So we're gonna see the ray mega evolve once again. Mega ray coming out, popping out. Come on, Smeagol, click that spore button. Delta stream. Yep. Okay. I feel good about this. I think we're gonna. We get it. We get it. Here we go. Knew it. Crunch. Oh dear. Oh, it's into Sableye. Ah, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Uh, the crunching Rayquaza. Uh, we will go for... Ooh, what do we do? We could probably see the Smeagol go follow me. Um, hmm. Do we just taunt it and set up a gravity? I could set up gravity. It'd be quite nice to set up now, wouldn't it? Yeah, we'll do that because... Paving the way for Groudon to come in, really. That's what we want. Um, and hopefully save like us down now. If it doesn't, we can still utilize it the next turn. We'll go for the taunt onto the Smeagol. Shut that thing down. Stop it being able to put anything to sleep. Follow me and all that sort of shenanigans. Pretty confident Bronzong should take a crunch from Ray. He says. Yeah, there's a follow me. I know your game. I just hope that Ray takes down Sableye rather than a Bronzong now, but who knows. Uh, there's the on me, gravity coming out, and we can start putting things to sleep. It's so good. <laughs> so bad, really, is it? But it's, it's good. Um, there's a crunch. Come on, get Sableye. Now it's Bronzong. Man, we can double up into the Ray. I feel like it is banded. Uh, we can go Jarrow Ball. Oh, we could just foul play. Oh, what do we do? Do we just put it to sleep and switch and grout on? It's maybe the better idea, to be honest. Keep Sableye around for later. And then we got that fake out for later as well. Smeagol can't do anything. Let's just put this ray to sleep. Yeah, let's do that. I've got a feeling the ray is banded. That is a heck of a lot of damage from a crunch. Like, unbanded... Like, Life Orb, you could, you could maybe argue, could see doing that much, but there's no Life Orb recall, so it's definitely banded, I would say. If that's like normal Mega Ray, then why am I not using Mega Ray all the time? That's all I'll say, even though we know that Mega Ray is great. So we'll get Groudon in, we'll overwrite the Delta Stream, we're going to see the... Mm, ooh, the Ray switch out, okay. Uh, Incineroar come in, don't mind that too much. Um, at all actually because it can't use fake out the next turn it does get the intimidate onto us but not the worst uh, hypnosis there we go <laughs> the thing is our, our turns are running out quite quickly we're going to see a struggle into does it take down art into ground on. okay that's fine um do we use this turn to how many turns of trick room we've got left to Ooh. Let's just start throwing blades out. Let's not worry about going for a sword stance just yet. Um, and go for a hypnosis into the Smeagol. Because they might switch the Smeagol out. You never know. I doubt it though. I think they'll probably just be happy to sack both Pokemon here. But it's good to t get rid of this Smeagol now while it's still taunted and we can get rid of it without any problems. So, Cinderella is going to switch out again. Xerneas coming in. It's going to take a Precipice Blades. If you don't mind. 
and we get the Gnosis waste of time into the, the, the Smeagol. If we were a bit smarter about it, maybe looked at the Incineroar and, and Hypnosis that slot, but uh, we are running out of Trick Room turns very quickly. Because getting that Xerneas um, with a Hypnosis here would have been incredible for us. I think I'm going to have to go for a Soul Stance now. And I think, I definitely think the Xerneas protects. Um... Does he incinerate or switch out again? That's the thing, like, if we can catch the... I'm going to go for a, a cheeky hypnosis into incineral because I feel like you might switch incineral out again to have more Intimidate Shuffle. Because it can't do anything here. And you're just stalling out the last turn of Trick Room. And I feel like you pre feel pretty confident about bringing the Ray in on a, a Precipice Blades minus two. Makes sense. If we can catch that Ray with a hypnosis, that would be really, really good. Because that makes... Okay, we're not going to see that, unfortunately. I wish we could see it. Um, I'll go for it again. Incineral has to stay asleep this turn, which is fine. Um, we do get the sword stance up, which is good. And that just puts us back to normal now, I think. We're just, yeah, normal. So we've still got the gravity up, so we can't miss this next turn, whatever happens. Um, and we will try and get a trick room up. Like, the Xerneas has to attack here to stop our Trick Room from the Bronzong. Um, yeah, we'll go for it. Okay, let's see. Ooh, Incineral coming out. Okay. Well, Ray's going to take a Precipice Blade. Unless the Xerneas has something mad like um, in Power Water. I'll just dazzle. It has to go for it though. Can't go for the Geomancy. Um, we'll get some nice damage. This does open the door for us to get Sableye back onto the field. Or even Kyogre to be honest. Wow. That's nice damage. Um, I'm going to get Sableye out. Because if you switch in Incineroar now, hmm, do we, like you have to protect Xerneas here, I think, that's the thing. I'm kind of tempted to go for a foul play into the Rayquaza and protect Groudon. Hmm. I feel like a water a, a waterfall comes out there into that slot. Um, or do we just precipice blades and hop and just or just fire punch into the Xerneas and just fake out into the ray? Maybe, maybe rather than messing around, let's go with that. Okay, we're gonna get that. Like a, a fire punch should take down the Xerneas from this range. It's just gonna take down Sableye, which is fine. Um, and I think Kyogre. Groudon should be enough to deal with. Hopefully we can take this down. Should be able to. <sighs> Don't know if we get lucky there with the critical hit. Or if the fire punch would have done it anyway. Um, now the Incineroar is still asleep. Could wake up. Of course. Depends what the Ray's got as well. Has it got Earth Power? Has it got Waterfall? It's banded. It's probably got... Um, Waterfall. I mean, one of the things we could potentially do here is just double protect, see what it locks itself into. And then we can play accordingly from there, couldn't we? Mm. The only problem is we can't really use Groudon to do anything to Ray, Ray now. That's the, that's the only issue. Uh, we've got to use Kyogre to, to deal with Ray. Groudon's minus one again, so we're not going to get the Incineroar. Um, I'm 
could we sword stance with Groudon? I don't think it's a threat for my opponent, and I think they have to... They have to really switch their priority now to the Kyogre. I think we can probably get a sword stance up. And then if Kyogre goes down, at least we've got a fire punch. We can try and... and... There's a fake out. No, it's in the Groudon! Okay. I mean, Kyogre should take a Dragon Ascent here. Like a Band of Dragon Ascent. I'm pretty hopeful that we'll take a Band of Dragon Ascent. We'll just go for a Precipice Blades and the Ice Beam. Into Ray. Oh, the Intimidate. It would have been nice if we had Salamence, of course. It's just about this Kyogre taking this Banded, banded Dragon Ascent. <sighs> Did we take it? I don't know. I don't know. Without Intimidate, I really don't know. We'll see. We'll soon find out. <laughs> Come on, Kyogre. You big whale. You know you can do it. You're not the worst, Kyogre, but you can't you can't be blamed for that. We could have fire punched there into the the ray, to be honest. Um, now I don't know if we can take oh, throat chop. Nah, the Groudon's not gonna take. Uh, yeah, I think the best thing we could have done there would have been, like, yeah, fire punch into the ray. If Kyogre went down, then. Yeah, we kind of covering ourselves a little bit in hope that a fire punch would have been enough to take it down, but unfortunately not. My opponents played the banded ray really well here. Um, so we've got to take our hats off to them. Unfortunately, I'm a bit, a bit sour about the defeat here because I feel like it's definitely a game we could have won uh, if we'd managed things a little bit better along the way. Um, ah, it's one that I really want a best of three of. You know, when you finish a game and you're like, just give me a best of three against this. Let's figure it out. Like, let's get this team figured out. Um, but never mind. Very good game, nonetheless. The main thing is, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to end it here. Um, remember to check out the Flinch Squad stuff uh, over on our Teespring site. Uh, link down in the description below. And um, I will see you all for another episode tomorrow. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye bye.